We have some sad news about our quail again. We're expecting cold, snowy weather. So I'm gonna move their chicken waterer, the main chicken waterer, inside the chicken coop for a few days where it shouldn't be able to freeze over. I'm a little worried about some of our chickens. Now, normal chickens will go inside to roost up high at night. It's okay. Are you a normal chicken? Does this look like a normal chicken? Well, we've got some strange birds that just like to hang out here in the run all night. I'd say there's usually about a half dozen of them. You might remember from our Valentine's Day video, I shut most of the chickens up inside the coop so I could spread a treat out for them in the shape of a heart without having about 50 chickens trying to eat it all at the same time as I was doing that before shooting that video I was out here in the middle of the night trying to catch chickens and just shoo them in the door I was able to I was able to catch a few, but I gave up trying to catch them all. Now, that might have made a good video all by itself. Okay. These chickens are perfectly safe from predators out here. And normally this door is open all the time. And normally this door is open all the time. I just hope that some of these stubborn chickens have enough sense to go inside where it's a little warmer rather than freezing to death out here if it gets that cold. I'm probably just worried about nothing. I hope you don't mind if I interrupt for a quick side note. These cement blocks that I'm using to put the waterer on are from a pile of things that I used when we first started YouTubing. We had this rickety grow out chicken coop that a raccoon was able to get underneath and kill some of our chickens to fortify it. I put these cement blocks all around the perimeter. Now I get to do something that I've never done before. Reuse one of my intros. It shows what that temporary grow out chicken coop setup looked like. Incidentally, I know I need to muck out the chicken coop. It looks pretty bad in there. 
there's just been too many things I have to do. Too many things I have to do first. I'll need to move finished compost into our garden beds so there'll be room in our compost bins for this bedding in the chicken coop. Anyway, short story long, it feels good to reuse practical things here on the homestead. Before we get to the sad news about our quail, here's something a little happier with our goats. What's the matter? Oh, you just hug her bear. She's a hugging goat. Oh my goodness, she's so jelly. She yells, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. Indigo. Not too mean on that, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Do you want a hug? Do you want a hug? Come here. Have this baby, Valkyrie. <laughs> What's your prediction? Three. Three babies? Yeah, I want three. Three babies for me. Three girls. That would be nice. We have some sad news about our quail again. One of the girls died. The males were very aggressive with the females when I first put them together. That behavior lasted for a few minutes and then it seemed to
to calm down a bit after that. Clearly, we are very new at raising quail. I feel bad for thinking that it was perfectly fine to introduce the birds together at the time that I did. Maybe there are some viewers out there who've been raising quail for a while and can share your experiences with us in the comments section. The male birds were hatched during the summer, so they were about six months old, and the females were maybe just a little bit more than two months old. The females look a little traumatized, but the rest of them are doing okay. The males are a lot more relaxed now. I'm thinking it's okay to keep all the birds together the way that we have them. I'll just keep an eye on them and see how things are going. I might have thought that the culprit would have been that little white quail that seemed to go so girl crazy on camera when I introduced the birds together, but it was actually one of our brown ones. I just don't know if this is a normal part of raising quail. Maybe some individual birds are just more aggressive than others. If that's the case, then maybe we should replace this little brown one with another male when we get a chance to do that. I'm still not sure about this artificial light. I was told by somebody with more experience that our cages were too dark. But back when the, when the males were younger and they were all together, their fighting seemed to get a lot worse right when we were introducing this artificial light to have a kind of a artificial extension of daylight hours. I think just to be on the safe side, I'll unscrew a few of these light bulbs to lower the intensity of the light level. The difference in quail behavior of these males is very striking. Here's a couple of clips. The first one shows a male before I introduced the females. He was constantly trying to escape and would often sing out his little mating bird song. This little white quail is a little more adventurous. Even though he can't quite get out with the door just a little bit ajar like this, he still tries. Let's see if we can catch him sticking his little head out. The next one is within just a couple of minutes of introducing the females and he was he was going out of his little mind with hormones. Finally, here he is the next day. He really hasn't been trying to escape and has been a lot quieter.
I might have thought that the... <clears throat> I might have thought that the quail that was the culprit would have been that little white one that went so girl crazy on camera when I first introduced the quail. I might have thought that the culprit would have been that little white quail that seemed to go so girl crazy on camera. Another car. I might have thought that the culprit would have been that little white. <clears throat> I might have thought that the. <clears throat> 